Trump said that the next president of the United States has got to be aggressive in bringing people in to the political process. That's what I said. That is what I believe. President Obama and I are friends. As you know, he came to Vermont to campaign for me when he was a senator. I have worked for his re-election, his first election, and his re-election. But I think it is really unfair to suggest that I have not been supportive of the president. I have been a strong ally on it with him on virtually every issue. Do senators have the right to disagree with the president? Have you ever disagreed I, with you know, a president? Senator, I suspect you may Senator, have. what I what I am what I am concerned about sure, is not not disagreement on issues, saying that this is what I'd rather do. I don't agree with the president on that. Calling the president weak, calling him a disappointment, calling several times that he should have a primary opponent when he ran for re-election in 2012. You know, I think that goes further than saying we have our disagreements. As a we, senator, yes, so I was a senator. I understand we can disagree on the path forward, but those kinds of personal oh. assessments and charges are ones that I find well, senator, uh, particularly like troubling. To, uh, you may respond to that, but it's time now for closing statements, and you can use your time for closing statements well, to do that. One of us ran against Barack Obama. I was not that candidate. Uh, uh, look, this has been a great debate. Uh, a lot of interesting issues have come together. Uh, let me uh, conclude uh, by just saying uh, this. There is no president, in my view, not Hillary Clinton, not Bernie Sanders, who has the capability or the power to take on Wall Street large campaign donors, the corporate media, the big money interest in this country alone. This campaign is not just about electing a president. What this campaign is about is creating a process for a political revolution in which millions of Americans, working people who have given up on the political process, they don't think anybody hears their pains, or their concerns. Young people for whom getting involved in politics is as, you know, it's like going to the moon. It ain't going to happen. Low-income people who are not involved in the political process. But this campaign is not only about electing someone who has the most progressive agenda. It is about bringing tens of millions of people together to demand that we have a government that represents all of us and not just the 1% who today have so much economic and political power. Thank you all very much. You know, we, we agree that we've got to get unaccountable money out of politics. We agree that Wall Street should never be allowed to wreck Main Street again. But here's the point I want to make tonight. I am not a single-issue candidate, and I do not believe we live in a single-issue country. I think that a lot of what we have to overcome to break down the barriers that are holding people back, whether it's poison in the water of the children of Flint, or whether it's the poor miners who are being left out and left behind in coal country, or whether it is any other American today who feels somehow put down and oppressed by racism, by sexism, by discrimination against the LGBT community, against the kind of efforts that need to be made to root out all of these barriers, that's what I want to take on. And here in Wisconsin, I want to reiterate, we've got to stand up for unions and working people who have been on the floor. by demagogues. Yes, does Wall Street and big financial interests along with drug companies, insurance companies, big oil, all of it have too much influence? You're right. But if we were to stop that tomorrow, we would still have the indifference, the negligence that we saw in Flint. We would still have racism holding people back. 
We would still have sexism preventing women from getting equal pay. We would still have LGBT people who get married on Saturday and get fired on Monday. And we would still have governors like Scott Walker and others trying to rip out the heart of the middle class by making it impossible to organize and stand up for better wages and working conditions. So I'm going to keep talking about tearing down all the barriers that stand in the way of Americans fulfilling their potential because I don't think our country can live up to its potential unless we give a chance to every single American to live up to theirs. Thank you.